So I think iRacing have kind of ruined their incredible Tempest wet weather system. You can see on screen here, this is what Tempest used to be like on the right hand side, absolutely blinded by the spray. And you can see on the left actually where that spray is. Now have a look. You can basically drive. I'm going to go into a lot of stuff in this video. I'm also going to show it to just drive faster in iRacing using my real world experience. But you can see here, you can basically follow the tail lights of the car ahead. And this is very different to what you experience in real life racing in wet weather. And I think it actually completely flips how we're going to drive in wet weather. And I, I kind of want iRacing to bring it back to how we had it before even though the new system is is better in in some ways and actually what you're going to see here right now as i come out of the pit is me applying my real world wet weather driving techniques in iRacing and being oh so pleasantly surprised at how well iRacing have done the fundamentals so let's talk about the fundamentals here which really is about wet and dry lines look i drive a lot in a set of course of competizione in torrential rain in vr using my top of the range pimax crystal headset absolutely love it but let's be honest you don't really have wet weather lines in acc so what is a wet weather line i'm going to show you exactly here at sabring i'm going to break on the dry line this is the fastest way to break in dry conditions it's heavily rubbered on the left hand side look at my inputs now look at what the car's doing and we go absolutely straight on and we're actually very close to hitting the barrier so in a race that could be game over especially if you're doing the 12-hour race here so looking at it now i want you to see if you can see that black tarmac on the left hand side i racing is accurately representing a rubbered dry line now what happens in wet conditions is that the water can't go through that rubber it sits on top of the rubber you don't have enough purchase in your tires and you end up aquaplaning, you end up sliding around. So what I'm going to show you to do is actually how to avoid doing that, drive faster, basically overtake everyone in your races, use the wet lines. But I just wanted to replay that little bit of footage there because that's me coming out the pits like I would do in ACC, like I would do in most other sim racing games, doing my normal line and getting caught out. So my brain was like, mm, okay, eye racing wet weather might be really good. And I'm also going to show you that here the spray the things that have changed in the in the update to the update i racing are just so hot on this right now they know they have an absolute winner here and that's why i am actually really surprised they're tinkering tinkering with the system so early now have a look on left hand side you can see the standing water this is going to be super interesting and a great example we're going to break again on the dry line now have a look after the dark rubber we end up on this lighter rubber here and then we get the purchase why is that because where you don't have rubber on the track tarmac is naturally porous there are little holes in the tarmac and the water can drain through so it is a legitimate technique to go deeper into the corner and sort of arrive on that more porous tarmac now have a look at the spray here for me as this prototype goes ahead this is very realistic spray you can see the tail lights blinking through the spray and i become disorientated i can vaguely work out where that car is in three-dimensional space i'm now obscured from the curbs either side it's hard for me to work out where i actually am in relation to the track and so if you have incredible track knowledge, you are rewarded because you can still work out where you are and you can still drive faster. Have a look at the massive difference here between the third person camera and the cockpit. Completely disorientated. And that is realistic. That is what happens when you drive in spray. Look, even if you're not a racing driver watching this in real world, you'll know when you go down the, the freeway or the motorway at, you know, 70 miles an hour and it's, you know, it's hard to absolutely tip it down you have to back off from the cars ahead no matter they've got their rain lights on you cannot see them that is 100 percent realistic i've carted in absolutely torrential conditions you cannot see a thing and your senses become very heightened for example as we go down here you would hear the sound bouncing off the wall on the right hand side and that would let you know how close you are to the wall so for the last time here i break on the on the dry line and just to show you again breaking on the dry line it's rubbered and uh, right at the end, after the dry line sort of passes now, now we're able to re-grip up a little bit and get that grip. But you don't want to be braking on the dry line. That's great. That's what iRacing and Tempest do really, really well. So coming over here on Sabring, the other thing about Sabring, very interesting um, surface here. It's very similar to the Berlin Formula E circuit I was at last year where it was raining and each block can be different. And you can see here they are representing that a little bit where the blocks are actually different. Look at the blocks on the inside. So we're going to do a lap now where we're going to come across some traffic ahead and really look at the spray. 
So we've got a GT3 Audi and we've got a prototype coming on the right side. I didn't even really notice a prototype. I'm going to be honest. I was kind of, I have less field of view in the cockpit and you can see here I just sort of, well he, to be honest, he really finds out. I think I sensed it as well. This thing about heightened senses and we both survive. He actually backs out. So we're behind this Audi GT3 who's doing the exact same thing, breaking on the dry line. <laughs> And they go deep because they're on that rubber surface and slide. So everyone is finding out. It was super, super exciting time. If you're watching this, by the way, and you don't have iRacing, don't make a mistake and pick up a really cheap description and start buying cars. I have a lot of strategy guides on how to maximize your value out of iRacing. I also have an affiliate link somewhere in the description where I get a bit of credit. But basically, do a lot of research before you decide to buy iRacing because you can go down the wrong path and end up spending too much money uh, when there are cheaper ways to do it. So this time, I'm going to come off the wet line here onto the inside and I'm going to break more, uh, off the dry line, break more on the wet weather line. And look how much we decelerated there. No going into the barrier right at the back. And here's the rubber. It's a great shot where you can see that's where the rubber line is going to be and we want to avoid it. And so I found a wet weather line that is significantly faster. You're welcome. I told you there would be lots of tips in this video. I'm going to show you how to drive faster. Please, by the way, make sure you subscribe if you are enjoying this. I know so many of you are. So there's two things we need to avoid in wet weather conditions. It's that rubber line when braking. So again, I'm staying to the inside here. So if you're wondering why it's on the inside, that's why, to avoid the rubber. And there's also standing water as well. Now, standing water has been a bit of an issue in iRacing because the graphics seem to struggle to really render that standing water. Now we saw it there. When you see that glistening, you can see that it's ready to render that standing water. But sometimes it completely disappears. I'm going to show you some very clear examples of that. Now, I decided here to go side by side with the Audi. And as they come across again, this is just, this is how spray should be. You should be at real disadvantage. This is actually the, one of the critical points of this video. I believe you should be at a disadvantage if you're the car behind in these sort of wet weather conditions. What is actually happening now, so see how that Audi just disappeared from view. I need to back off because I don't know if they're going to break and I'm not going to see it too late. I'm going to crash into them, get a penalty. Um, I don't know if, you know, I, I'm disorientated, so I can't do my maximum line. I'm losing out on fair play to them for overtaking me. That is, I think that's been completely turned on its head with the new update. Because those wet weather tail lights are basically, you can see them through all of the spray. You're actually an advantage driving behind because you can just basically fix yourself on the car ahead. You can lock onto it and you could subconsciously drive quite in a relaxed way based on what the car ahead is doing. If you see the car ahead go deep, brake a little bit earlier. Whereas right now, I can't really see what the car ahead is doing. I don't. I didn't know there that he was going to go deep. I couldn't really tell because it was obscured by the spray. And this has really gone away in the new update. So I'm showing you here, again, disappearing into the spray. And that would be the case because it just there is so much spray. We're talking about very wet conditions now. And I hope not every race is going to be like this, by the way. I hope it's going to be very rare for the rain to be like this. So it'll be a real, really memorable occasion. Again, you can see standing water visible on track because of that shimmering. So we can see the puddles and avoid them as I almost hit the Lamborghini. So we're ahead of both the Lamborghini and the Audi right now. It is magical science, but we go deep again. Very frustrated. And you can see here breaking on that inside line. And look at the standing water on the inside there as well. You can see the rubbered line. You can see where we should be for the wet line and rotating deep. There are a few different philosophies about how you rotate out of wet corners. Do you hug it to the inside or do you go deep and find that unrubber tarmac on the exit? Something that's worth experimenting. When I drive in real life in wet weather conditions, I always try and experiment on both. Again, we're behind the two cars here, which means double the spray, double the fun. Let me know in the comments which you prefer because I think there's a undercurrent of a eSports campaign here where esports drivers you know they're going to be artificially turning the exposure up in these conditions they they're going to be lowering the graphics so it's not going to be rendering as much tough whereas from my perspective i'm not an esports driver i want it to be as immersive as possible and ultimately as realistic as possible and i don't think the esports drivers were happy about being completely blind i think a lot of people's licenses were going to tank i think it would have really rewarded very safe drivers like if you were a safe driver you can go into one of these races and actually do very well. And that's the, the story of my karting championship career has been some of my best ever results where I've got results way better than, than what I should be getting. 
is because I've been super sensible in wet weather conditions and overtaken a lot of the front runners as they've been off by the side of the road. As we're going to see here, people spinning off a whole series of yellow flags actually. And I'm going to show you something very interesting when we got onto the back state. Now we're going to cut to the cockpit view because this does look quite basic. You can see the way that the rain is going out the windshield, but it, it does, it's ultimately obscuring the vision as it should do. And I'm having, the, what you're watching right now is me having my best sim racing experience, I would say for the last few years, full stop. It's just so enjoyable. I'm on the limit. There's cars everywhere. There's a hypercar here facing the wrong way on the straight. <laughs> and have a look what I'm going to do here on the end of this straight. So I've got two cars ahead. I'm confident in my ability. I can see the spray. I don't know where they are. And I'm just going to massively outbreak them. Get slightly off that wet weather line. Grip in here. And I want to slow it down. Have a look at the reflections. You can really see here. Critical moment. That's going to disappear in a second. Keep watching, keep watching, keep watching. Keep watching, it's going to happen. I promise you, there, bang, goes off. So there is some issue with the rendering. If we can have it like that all the time, it's going to be very magical. And you'll notice subtle differences lap on lap because the great thing about Tempest is it is a fully dynamic system. So it will be changing um, all the time if you have it on, on the right settings. Now I'm going to show you how to not drive in the wet. So if you want to see me bin it, it's about to happen. But it's, it's, it's a very magical experience. And I think some of that magic has been taken away with the update to the update and I don't know what other people are going to say about it I think there's a lot of positives about it I'm just giving my experience here as a real world I do a lot of karting in wet weather conditions over the years and you can see there I get caught out and those are the consequences let me know what you think I'll see you next time